Hey guys, hope you're doing well and are ready to get back to analyzing what it means to be in equilibrium in a competitive market. So we've looked at both the demand side and the supply side. You should be very comfortable in analyzing what it means to say your, you know, what the equilibrium price is and what the equilibrium quantity is. And you should also understand what happens if we are not in equilibrium. So we talked about surpluses and shortages. Should be very clear on how the market gets back to equilibrium if there is a surplus or a shortage. It's a law of demand and supply states that the price of the good, and this is the point of you know, how we get out of surpluses and shortages, the price of a good adjusts automatically. Nobody has to tell the producers, nobody has to tell the consumers what price they should pay or what price the producer should charge, but they automatically adjust to get to equilibrium. So eventually, if the market forces are allowed to play, play out, the market will get to equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity and adjust to get to that point. So if you saw a picture go by the screen, uh, that's a picture of somebody in the, you know, in a very cold area trying to sell ice cream. And the point here is that you need both people who want to buy and producers who want to sell, not just one side. So just because you're able to produce and sell ice cream for a very low price, nobody's going to buy it in that temperature. That's the whole point of that example. So we'll look at several examples uh, in today's video as well. So here's the basic process. If you're told to analyze what happens to demand and supply or equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity and something happens, this, these are the steps. First, you have to be very clear what is the market we're anal analyzing, right? So if, the, if it's a market for good X, that's what you're drawing the graph for. The next question you ask is decide whether there's a shift in the supply curve or there's a shift in the demand curve or if there's a shift in both, right? Depending on what is changing there. Then you decide which direction the curve shifts. Is the demand increasing, the demand decreasing, supply increasing, supply decreasing? You have to know what happens. And then finally, you're going to use the, you know, the movements in those graphs to analyze what happens to equilibrium price and quantity. So I'll do a detailed example today to make sure you're very thorough with this whole process. So before, before I do an example, let's pick some simple examples. So if there's a supply, there's a demand. I've, I've you know, kept the same example of cakes and the pastry and uh, the baker that we've stuck to for a while. If that's a supply, that's a demand curve. Uh, that's the equilibrium price, that's the equilibrium quantity. Uh, you know, just D1 and you know, this you can write this as S. This is the demand curve. The only reason I have that D1 is because there's an increase in demand. So we're gonna go from D1 to D2. That's the only reason I haven't written demand uh, in its entirety. That's your equilibrium price, uh, equilibrium quantity, and your initial equilibrium point. So if there's an increase in demand, there can be several factors that cause an increase in demand, right? I'll just pick one. You know the curve is going to shift outward, or the demand curve is going to move to the right. An increase is always to the right. A decrease is always to the left for both supply and demand. If the supply curve increases, it moves here. If the supply curve decreases, it moves here. If the demand curve increases, it moves here, and decreases, it moves to the left. So it's always right and left, not up and down. Some students confuse by thinking of these movements as up and down, it's always right and left. So keep that in mind. So I have take, taken the reason to be, if, the, if there's an increase in the price of pastries, so what I'm assuming here is pastries and cakes substitutes. Right? So make sure you understand what uh, all those, those factors in the demand side is. If there's an increase in the price of a substitute, the demand for our good goes up. So the demand for cake goes up. Now, this point is meaningless. Right? When the demand curve moves out to D2, if you stick to price of $2, at that price, now there's going to be more people who want to buy the good than there is supply. So it's going to create a shortage. We know from the previous video, if there's a shortage, the price increases. So if the price increases, the new equilibrium point is going to be 250, and the new quantity of cakes that gets bought and sold is going to be 10. So producers are going to get paid 50 cents more, consumers are going to pay 50 cents more, and there are going to be three more cakes that get both produced and bought. Right? So make sure you understand change in price, change in equilibrium quantity as a result of an increase in demand. So hopefully you are following what's going on because eventually I'm going to shift both demand and supply so it gets a little cluttered but as long as you are thorough with what, you know, what the order of events and what the steps are, you should be good. All right? So it's going to result in a higher price and consequently a higher quantity both produced and bought. All right, so make sure you, just to, you know, again, making sure that you understand this, a shift in the supply curve is called a change in supply. A movement along the supply curve is a change in quantity supply. A shift in the demand curve is where you move the whole line. And if there's a change in the price of the good, you don't move any line, you just move along the curves. All right, so again, hopefully you remember all of those uh, differences between change in QD, change in demand, change in QS, and change in supply. All right, so now let's look at an example where there's a decrease in supply. 
Right, so again, we start off with the same equilibrium point, that's the same initial equilibrium. If there's a reduction in supply because the price of eggs reduces, all right? So, sorry, if there's an increase in the price of eggs, eggs are an ingredient in making cakes. So if you need eggs to make cakes, if the price of an input goes up, that's going to reduce the supply of cakes. Again, hopefully you remember the things that shift the supply curve. If the supply curve decreases, which is a leftward movement in the supply side, then now you just follow the equilibrium point you don't have to memorize any of this, right? You just shift the line. Hopefully, if you, if you get the shift in the right direction, uh, you just move it and then you get the answer given to you from those graphs. So this is your new equilibrium point. The price goes up to 250, but now there are fewer cakes being both produced and sold. So the difference between the previous video and this video is that the price, the equilibrium price goes up. But in the previous video, since the demand increased, we were buying more quantities. Here, the supply decreased, so we are buying and selling less quantities. So don't try to intuitively come up with what happens to quantity and price, just follow the graph. That will always be what gets you to the right point. Just follow the graph. All right, so now let's do a detailed example of where I'm going to shift both demand and supply and see what happens to equilibrium price and quantity. So I'm going to be analyzing the market for electric cars. Right? So electric cars are cars that do not require gasoline. You can think of hybrid cars that require some gasoline and some they operate on battery. The point is we are looking at the market for cars which do not require gasoline. They're going to be uh, you know, running on, on battery. So we have the market for electric cars. We have the quantity of electric cars. We have the price of electric cars. We have the demand for electric cars. And we have the supply for electric cars. So the one thing that I haven't uh, focused on as much in this video is making any assumptions about elasticity of supply and demand. So you should know that, but I haven't made too many assumptions here. Uh, you know, but as long as you understand the shifts, all we do when we are making certain assumptions about elasticity is just making the you know, supply curve more flat or steep or making the demand curve more steep or flat. So that part doesn't change. The movement remains the same. It's just you know, which curve is more steep, which curve is more flat. All right, so now this is going to be our equilibrium price. I'm going to call this P0. And this is going to be your equilibrium quantity. I'm going to call this Q0. And this is your starting equilibrium point, And I'm going to call that E0. So these are starting points. And there are two things that are going to happen. One thing is the price of gasoline has gone up. And the other thing that happens is there's an improvement in technology of electric cars or hybrid cars. So this is a very realistic example. If you wonder why is it that we are seeing more electric cars and more hybrid cars today than 10, 15 years ago, it's not just one day we woke up and we wanted more electric cars. It's because of what happens in the real world, what happens in the market. So we observe that gasoline is there, you know, there's not an infinite amount of quantity that we can, we can uh, get. So the price of gasoline, if you look at, you know, the last several decades, it's gone up for most countries. So as a result of that, think of the link between gasoline and electric cars. Electric cars do not require gasoline. So if the price of gasoline goes up, people are going to want to demand more electric cars, right? So I'm going to call this D0, sorry, and I'm going to call this D1. So I like to keep all the notations the same. So D0, E0, P0, Q0 all correspond to the same point uh, on the graph. And then D1 is the, is the shift. So price of gasoline is like a substitute to electric cars because if you're not using electric cars, you're using other cars for which you need gasoline. So when the price of gas goes up, you would rather not buy those cars and, and instead buy electric cars. Right? So that's the reason we have this link. So now when the demand goes up for, elect, uh, for uh, sorry, when the price of gasoline goes up and as a result the demand for electric cars goes up, what we observe is that the price of electric car increases and so does the quantity. So you just take the line down. I'm not drawing the lines because it gets very cluttered. So that's the first thing that happens. You go from E0 to E1, P0 to P1, Q0 to Q1. The second thing that happens is there's been an improvement in technology. So we know if there's an improvement in technology that lowers the costs of producing that car, which now you should understand is going to increase supply. So this one increased demand. This one's going to increase supply. So the supply goes up. I'll pick a different color. If the supply increases, we go from S0 to S1. Now we are at a brand new intersection point where S0 and S1 intersect. As a result of that, price goes, you know, in this case, it just goes back to where P0 was and quantity goes up to Q2. So what we see is as a result of the supply going, so in the first case, when demand increased, price went up, quantity went up. In the second case, where supply increased, price went down, quantity went up again. So what happens to starting and ending price depends on which movement is higher, right? Was the increase more or was the decrease more? In this case, it looks like P0 and P2 are the same. So we've gotten back to the same point as where we started. 
at you know where we started off in E0. But the quantity most definitely increases. There were more hybrid cars being bought and sold when the price of gasoline went up. And there were also more hybrid cars being bought and sold when technology improved. So what we observe in this market is that there are more quantity of hybrid cars now that we see than before. And this is a fairly realistic example of how the market has developed. Right, these are two factors that we've seen in the real world. And now using supply and demand, you can make some guesses of what might happen to quantity or price in certain markets. So this example is a good way for you to know and learn how to move graphs and how to follow the equilibrium points. Right, so one more thing to keep in mind is when we went from D0 to D1, D0 is irrelevant now. Don't delete it, but it, you keep it there, but don't think about it. So when we went from S0 to S1, now we're only looking at S1 and at D1. The old demand curve is irrelevant. So that point of intersection doesn't mean anything. All right, so hopefully you have a good understanding of how the demand and supply curves move and in what direction they move based on the factors and what are the consequent, you know, what are the, uh, the consequent result in terms of price and quantity. So here's a summary which most books have. I will almost try and force you not to memorize it. It's impossible for me to come across the camera and force you to do that, but if I could, I would. Uh, do not memorize this chart, just draw out the graph. I draw the supply curve, draw the demand curve, move the things in the direction they're supposed to move. And if you move them correctly, the answer will be given to you. So don't memorize something like this. Uh, this is just summarizing all the scenarios uh, because you can have either no change in demand, increase, decrease, no change in supply, increase, decrease. So these are all the scenarios that you might have. So the point is that try to draw the graph on your own and see what curve shifts in what direction and come up with your new equilibrium price and quantity instead of memorizing this. So hopefully in this video you have a good understanding of how a market equilibrium changes when there's either a shift in the demand curve or a shift in the supply curve and what happens to equilibrium price and quantity. And you might be able to come up with some realistic examples and observe what is happening and use demand and supply to answer uh, those questions in terms of whether the price has gone up, whether the quantity has gone up or you know, what combination of the two. So review this material and we'll continue with this topic in the next video.